Okay, welcome. I'm going to show you guys through a series of videos how we're going to draw in on shape the pedestal table, uh, the same one we've been making it in class. So uh, throughout this video, or these videos, I'll be referring to these files that give us our, the details for our project. And uh, yeah, let's begin on the first one. We're going to start by drawing the foot. So let's go back in on shape and click create document. Call it pedestal table. I'm just going to put a one there because I've already got a file called pedestal table. You'll create a new file, I think. There you go. And we're going to use these tabs down the bottom here. So where it's got part studio, we're actually going to rename that to foot. Uh, it'll make it a bit easier later because we're going to use the assembly to put it together. So we need to refer to this drawing to draw our foot. So there's a few dimensions and sizes here. I'm going to flip back and forward. So up here, it's a bit hard to tell, but there's a, a, a tall, skinny rectangle, 85 by 5 millimeters. And that's where we're going to start our drawing. And from those edges of that rectangle, we can reference uh, the points that we need to draw this shape. So I'm going to be flicking backwards and forwards because I'm sure I won't remember all those sizes. So we'll start on the front plane. So let's click sketch front plane. Let's turn off all the planes now that we've selected one and I'm going to click N so it views it front on. We could have clicked the view cube or we could have done right click view normal uh, to get uh, to get it looking front on. Start with the rectangle, draw the rectangle, click once to start, click again to finish. Notice that it puts this grey square around the edges. Provided I don't click anything else, uh, I can actually type the sizes directly. So on the long dimension, it's 85, press enter, it'll jump to the other dimension and it was 5. Circle next, and we're going to draw a circle down in this area. We will worry about the placement later. Now, if by some chance, if you happen to be hovering over here with your cursor after you've clicked the circle, and then you move your cursor over there, it'll try to reference those points. So you definitely don't want to place the circle, the center of the circle, reference to any of those points. So make sure you haven't got that dash line before you start your circle. So don't want a dash line. Click once, stretch the circle out, click again. Now we need to place this circle uh, in the correct space relative to the, our rectangle and the correct size. So let's have a look. It's a 70 mil diameter. It's 165 from this edge of that rectangle and it's 19 down from the short edge. See if I can remember those sizes. So, dimension tool. Group once on the edge. 70, I think it was. I'll double check in a second. Dimension tool still selected, so we're going to click once on the long edge of that first rectangle. Click once in the center of the circle, and we'll just move that down out of the way. Click again, and we'll type. 165 and it should push your circle across a bit and the center of the circle I think was 19 from the short edge so you may have to zoom in so you can select that short edge so click once click once on the center I'll just move this out of the way and I'll click again and type 19 there you go it adjusted those things let's have a quick look yeah, we've got those sizes correct. So we've got one big arc that runs from the, touches the circle and goes to the corner of that rectangle here. So let's draw that in. 
So we're going to look for the arc tool. A three-point arc is ideal. Uh, you may have to check under the down arrows to find it. So let's click once. Click somewhere on this bottom right edge of that circle. Make sure the circle is highlighted when you start. Uh, if, you, if, it's, if it doesn't highlight the edge, don't click to start the arc. Click once. Now we're going to move the cursor up to the bottom corner, the bottom left corner of that rectangle, and it should snap to the corner. It should highlight the corner. Click once more. Now I can still I can move this arc around, and it won't click it in place until I click. So we just need to make sure that we are arcing upwards like that, and click. We need to get this at the right radius. It, well, actually, I shouldn't say radius because it needs to be tangent. The arc needs to be tangent to the circle. The arc needs to be tangent to that short edge. I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Up along the top toolbar, we're going to look for the tangent tool. It's got a circle and a line touching it. So click that. Then it's highlighted. It's selected. Click once on the arc. Click once on the short edge of that rectangle. It adjusted the arc. And we now need to make it tangent to our circle. So click once on the arc, click once on the circle. It adjusted it there for us. So we've got the top edge to draw in now. So it's an arc that touches the circle, goes up. Then there's another arc that runs this way to the top here. And it's given us a placement of the join there. So it's 135, 100 across, 35 up from that bottom edge. So let's go and do that. So we need the three point arc tool again. Somewhere in the top right of the circle, click once on the edge. We're just going to click in space here. We don't really know the placement exactly yet. Click. And we want this one bending down. So get it bending down, then click again. Now we're going to create a new arc that goes from the edge of that arc to the top left corner of that rectangle. So click once and click again on the rectangle. This time we want it arcing upwards. Don't worry too much about the shape yet because we're going to use that tangent tool again to get it in. Uh, to get it set correctly, but first we need to reference this point. I've forgotten the sizes already. 100 across, 35 up. So we're going to use the dimension tool to do that. Dimension tool, click once on the long edge, click once at the joining point of those two arcs. Now we'll just move that up somewhere out of the way so it we can read it, but it's not interfering with our drawing. Click again. You type 100. It should shift things. Don't be too concerned about what it looks like yet. Click once on the short edge, short bottom edge of that rectangle. Click once at the point where they join. We'll just move this out of the way. Click again and type 35. It's adjusted all that. Now we just need to go and find the tangent button again. We need to make all everything, uh, every edge that these arcs join to needs to be tangent. So it needs to be tangent to the top short edge. So click once on the short edge, click once on the arc. Now we click once on the arc, click once on the other arc. Now we click once on this arc and against the circle. And there we go, it's adjusted everything for us. Now we've got some extra lines that we don't need in here anymore. So look for the trim tool, it looks like a pair of scissors. Trim away a bit. Uh, hopefully you can see what I'm trimming. Uh, the inside part of that circle, we don't need that. And trim away this inside long edge of that rectangle, we don't need that anymore either. There's our sketch. So tick once, 
oh, tick the click, click the tick on the sketch to end that sketch. Let's go back to a three dimensional view. And now we're going to extrude that. Its thickness is 18 millimeters. Uh, what do you want to extrude? We want to extrude that shape. We change the depth to 18. And when you're happy, you will click the tick on the extrude dialog. All that's left to do now is we're going to put a fillet around these edges. So look for the fillet tool. You may have to look under a down arrow. Click it. What do you want to fill it? So it's important that we click edges here. We don't want to click a face. If I click on a face, I'll change the radius to 5. It will fill it. Because I've clicked on the face, it'll actually fill it, fill it this edge as well. We don't want that. So if you click on the wrong thing, go back to the dialog and click the little X here. But we'll click only on the edge. We don't want to click on a face. We want to click on an edge. And that fillet should run all the way around. If it doesn't run around, it could be that this tick, where it says tangent propagation, is unticked. So make sure that's ticked and that fillet will run all the way around. We need to do the same on the opposite edge. So we should be able to just click on this opposite edge here. And that will do the same. Have a look at it. And that's it. So we can tick the fillet and uh, we finished the foot. We only need to draw it once. And that's it for this video.